Here it is, the show everybody goes overboard about. The program both youngsters and grown-ups claim as their own. The Land of the Lost, with a raft of prizes for lucky winners. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Land of the Lost. And its discoverer, the well-known storyteller, Isabel Manning Hewson. to everything that is really, truly lost. Things that disappear and never turn up again. They go to a mysterious kingdom at the bottom of the sea called the Land of the Lost. My brother Billy and I discovered this wondrous kingdom after we made friends with Red Lantern, the wise talking fish. Every week, he took us to a new part of the Land of the Lost We'd travel down together on a swift ocean current, pass through the magic curtain that guards the entrance, and there we'd be. One day, we'd no sooner stepped off the current than Red Lantern said, Galloping guppies, Billy. I've got a letter here I forgot to give you. For me? Now, who do you suppose would be writing me down here? Well, Kipper, my flippers, Billy. Open it and find out. Well, what does it say, Billy? Hmm. Dear Billy. Just heard that you have been visiting the land of the lost. How about coming over my way this week? I'll be waiting at the Fork Roads. Your old friend, Jack. Jack? Who is your old friend, Billy? Search me. I don't even know anybody by that name. And I never heard of the Fork Roads. Well, come along. I'll take you there right now. Anchors away. <laughs> See, tadpoles, just ahead, we're coming to the great tableland. Tableland? Oh, yeah. Oh, my. It stretches out a long way. And look, isn't that a river over toward the right? Yep, that's Spoon River. We've got to cross it to get where we're going. Spoon River. (laughs) What a funny... <laughs> Pardon me, Paddam. Holy smokes. It's a big soup spoon walking around by himself. Yes. Uh, this part of the tableland is inhabited by lost spoons. Huh? How do you do, sir? I'm Red Lantern from King Findall's Court, and here are Isabel and Billy. It's a measure to pleat you, I'm sure. Uh, what does he mean? A pleasure to meet you, of course. Just a spoonerism. Spoonerism? What's that? An old spoonish custom, my friend. We are apt to twist our words a trifle. Ahem, uh, we're on our way to the fork roads, Mr. Soup Spoon. Well, I'll be glad to row you to the shiver. Uh, show us to the river? Well, that's very kind of you. Uh, suppose I go ahead with the little lady. Uh, this way? <laughs> Let me walk on the other side, Isabel. The spoon should always be on the right, you know. Oh, excuse me, I forgot. Hey, look! A whole bunch of silverware. Gosh, I never knew so many kinds of spoons. Oh, yes. Everything from soup to sherbet, my boy. Isn't that right, mate? Well, how about giving these friends of mine the spoon song? Okay, Soupy. Here goes. <laughs> Here 
sugar by the scoop. E-I-E-I-O. I hold the most of all the grapes. E-I-E-I-O. With a dip, dip here and a dip, dip there. Here a dip, there a dip, here and there a dip, dip. I'm for sugar. I'm for food. E-I-E-I-O. Where? <laughs> How is that for a chorus of the silvery voices? Oh, it was awfully nice. Hold on there, everyone. Who's that, Soupy? The uh, tall chap uh, coming this way. Uh, that's uh, Salad the Gallant Spoon. Uh, 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 salad Spoon. Looks like a sterling character. Oh, he is. He's dippy about <laughs> Lavinia Ladle. Oh, is that so? He thinks she has the most Beautiful hallmark in Spoon River. Really? Yeah. The two of them are always killing and booing. Uh, oh, uh, pardon me. Uh, billing and uh, cooing. Uh, uh, what's your hurry, Sarah? Something. Something terrible has happened. What oh, is my. it? Spill it, Sarah. Lavinia has. Disappeared. Oh, my Lavinia goodness. Lavinia Needle? Gone? Vanished. I... I took her home myself after dinner last night. But she hasn't been seen since. You fellas have got to help me look for her. Oh, of course, Sarah. Sure thing. Let's get organized. I knew I could count on you. Dan Dipper, um, take a couple of the boys out to the punch bowl and work around the edge. Oh, hey. Soupy? You're the best man to tackle the big terrine. Yes. She... She might have gone skimming there. Oh, no, no. I'll lead a posse of volunteers through the Holland Days Tunnel. It's dangerous, but... We're with you, Sarah. We spoons can take if there's no doubt. Oh, Sarah. Sorry to leave you, Red Lantern, but you're near the river now. Goodbye, Soupy. Goodbye. And uh, don't forget to mind your table manners. <laughs> oh, mercy, that salad spoon certainly stirred things up. I'll say. Uh-oh, hurry up, Pollywogs. Sounds like a boat whistle. Gosh, so this is Spoon River. Sure is a muddy-looking stream. Why, it's brown as, as gravy. Just what it's made of, Billy. Real gravy? Uh-huh. My goodness alive. <laughs> and Billy, the boat is a gravy boat. Oh, what do you know? Oh, oh, All aboard this cover aboard. Come on, kids. Jeez, I never saw a lady boat captain before. I'm the only one down here, sonny. Lazy Susan, they call me, on account of I'm always turning round and coming back right where I started from. Well, all set, then let's go. Oh, we're moving. Yep. Only takes a minute or two to get across if you don't hit a lump. You sure handle the boat nicely, Susan. Must be hard to steer through that gravy. Oh, I'm a killer diller at the tiller. <laughs> <laughs> but see, what was all the excitement back in Spoonville? Uh, the population has just gone out to search for a young lady who has disappeared. A lady? Wouldn't be Lavinia now, would it? Why, yes, that was her name. They've all gone the wrong way, then. I took Lavinia across Spoon River myself late last night. Oh? It's my private opinion she eloped with that gay young tuning fork who met her on the other side. Uh-oh. If the Great Horn Spoon knew about it, there'd be trouble, too. The Great Horn Spoon? 
Who's that? He rules over the whole tableland, Isabel. And he's been very strict about elopements ever since the dish ran away with the spoon. If you ask me, Lavinia's in for trouble anyhow. I don't think that tune and fork rings true. How's that? Well, then, shouldn't we let Salahad know about it? Maybe you're right, sir. I'll get word to him on my return trip. We're pulling in now. And a very pleasant crossing, Susan. Come on, Tadpoles. Thanks for the ride, Susan. Goodbye. 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 Uh, well, Billy, in a minute you'll discover who that old friend of yours is. The one who wrote you the letter. I sure hope he's on hand. Oh, I see a sign ahead. Yes, it says the fork rose. And somebody's standing underneath hey, it. Hey, Jiminy Christmas, of course I do. It's my old jackknife. Hiya, Billy. Put her there, brother. Oh, boy, am I glad to see you. Hey, here. You and Isabel both. Oh, and this is our friend Red Lantern, Jack. Glad to know you, Jack. Hiya. I can see right now you'd never be dull company. Well, thanks. But I'm afraid I'm not sharp enough for the rest of the crowd down here. Well, what do you mean, fella? Well, let's get along toward Whetstone Castle and I'll tell you. Whetstone Castle? What's that? You can see it just ahead. It's where the knives of the square table live. Gosh, I never heard of that outfit. Why, they're the most important blades in knife them, Billy. Sir Inkton Penknife, Sir Keen Carver, and a number of others. That's right. Why, Jackknife, how exciting to think of you living in that big castle with all Oh, those... but I don't live there, Isabel. That's just the trouble. They won't let me join the square table. Why not? Well, it's this way. You have to prove your mettle before you're considered worthy. And they claim I'm still young and untried. Untried? That's a lot of baloney. Why, I could tell them plenty you did for me. Oh, gosh, Billy. Would you? Oh, that's what I've been hoping. You bet your corkscrew. You see, there's a meeting at the castle right now. And if I could bring someone to testify for me there, I might still have a chance. Oh, I'd rather be a knife of the square table than anything in the world. Oh, of course we'll help you, Jack. But how do you get into the castle? Well, we knives take a shortcut through the side door. You mean down this narrow passage? That's right. Leads into the great hall where the square table is. Hear that? The knives are in there now. Just follow me. I'll open the door gently. Oh, mercy. Look at them all drawn up and gleaming. Oh, God. Knife of the table square. Come of the fame in the field. Quite without reproach. Every blade on the blade to deal. With crime, peril or tyranny. Knowing that come what may, we have made a pledge that our pledge ever sharp will stay. What if the bread is stale? What if the meat is tough? Articles are given up when we start getting rough for the night. Night of the table. Nothing can blunt our zeal. Test us if you must. We won't rust. You can trust. Stay a seat. Attention, Sir Knight. Answer to the roll call. Well, fish to the Columbus. That's the great horn spoon himself, Tadpole. I didn't expect him to be here. Sir Keen Carver. Present, my lord. Sir Inkton Penknight. Present. Sir Inkton's little, but oh my. Sir Slicewell Cake Cutter. Uh, here. Sir Crusty Bread Knight. Uh, here. He's a loafer, if you ask me. Brush those crumbs off your chin, Sir Crusty. I'm surprised at you. Uh, Sorry, sorry, my lord. <coughs> Sir Payman. Sorry, he's about to sneeze. Oh, Billy. Sir, I'm... Well, sit on my head. 
Oh, upon my blade, who was that? Me, sir. And, oh, boy. Oh, well, by all the chisels, how did you get in here? Um, I, I brought him, sir, King. Uh, it's that persistent young jackknife again. Ha! How dare you interrupt the meeting? Because you told me, sir, that if I could get someone to testify for me, I might be el- um, eligible to join the square table. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, we've, we've no time today. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, since you gave your word, Sakin, and the applicant has produced his witness... He should be heard. Uh, yes, but, uh, but uh, how do we know the witness is trustworthy, my Lord Hornspoon? I'll vouch for that, gentlemen. Well, who are you? Who are you? Why, it's Red Lantern, the guiding light to the land of the lost. You are acquainted with this boy, Red Lantern? I am, sir. Billy is Jack Knight's former owner and knows all about him. Oh, you do? Well, Very well. What can you say on behalf of your old comrade, we left? Well, sir, Jack could carve any kind of wood, and he just couldn't miss it, Mumbly Peg. Mumbly Peg? Ha! A game for idlers and children. I told you this Jack was nothing but a village cut-up. Yeah. Order! Minor accomplishments like games and whittling... Do not count here, Billy. Uh-oh. Every blade at this table has deeds of high renown and achievement to his credit. Sir Inkton Penknife served a famous writer for 20 years and never broke a pencil point. My goodness. Sir Keen once cut through a wire that was choking a helpless animal. Oh, <laughs> merely lion of duty. And those nicks on Sir Slicewell Cake Cutter's blade came from many a valiant struggle in the home of a bride who was learning to cook. I still get a pain in the nick on baking day. What can you tell us about Jack Knife that compares with such exploits as these? Well, there was a time when my dad forgot his door key and Jack tried to open the window. <laughs> no risk involved there. And he was always very nice about odd jobs around the house. Commendable, but hardly valiant. Well, well, maybe he never had a chance at anything really big. But as long as I had him, he did everything I wanted him to and did it well. I don't see what more anyone could ask. Bravo, Billy. Yes, it's a good start, I grant you. But it's not enough. Quite so. Come back again two or three years from now, Jack, when you're a little older. Perhaps you'll have carved out more of a career by then. Yes, yes, sir. Gosh, Jack, I'm awful sorry. Oh, it's all right, Billy. You did your best. Thanks. Well, 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 enter, enter, enter. What does this outcry mean? Bless my scales, it's a pair of butter knives. The lost food. And then it's so well, Beth. We've run all the way from Sugarloaf Pass. Now, don't tell me another tongue war has broken out. Uh, no, sir, but we've just discovered that the great silver chest is up there. <laughs> the chest that was stolen by highwaymen at the Fork Road last week? Oh, uh, yes, Sir Keen. The robbers must have a bad... A damsel! Well, say, well, what's that, a damsel? Yes, Sir Krusty, and in dire distress. But alas, nobody can open the padlock that fastens the chest. Enough! It is the call to arms. Fellow Nile, is is there one among you who would not risk his blade to save an imprisoned damsel? You hung to the road! There it is. Oh, there's the chest. Now, each one of us will try his metal on it. Line up. <laughs> I'll uh, go first. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh, I, uh, I can do no more. 
my staunchest efforts do not even mar the surface of this accursed chest. Jiminy, poor Sartina's just about battered his edge off. Yeah, I'm afraid the situation's hopeless, Billy. That chest is made of hard metal. Oh, oh, oh. but remember the prisoner inside. We've got to get her out. And the side, jackknife. No room here for any but the tried and true. Oh, shut Gosh, her voice is getting mighty faint. Uh, try the padlock again, Inkton, old fellow. It's the only chance. But Inkton's bent already. You can't pick a strong lock with a pen knife. I can try once more, Sir Slicewell. Oh, 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 He's broken his blade. Sir Inkton's hurt. Oh, stand back, everybody. Stand back. Lay him over here. Oh. Easy now, easy. There we are. Easy. Uh, I, I did my best. Never let it be said that a knife of this square table wasn't of too scratch. Oh, my poor friend. We have all done our best, but we have failed. Then let me get at that chest. I'm young and strong. I'll show you. Oh, oh, will you, Jack? You're not doing a bit of good. Oh, please, Dad, please. Oh, oh, I guess you're right. I'm no better than the rest. No, oh, maybe that'll teach you to stay back in the rank and file where you belong. But I was only... Wait a minute. What was that you said? The rank and file. <gasps> Thanks for the hint, Sir Crusty. Eh? Yeah? Well, what's that? It's true that an ordinary knife can't dent that chest or pick the catch or cut a hole in the side. Hello? But you can saw the whole darn padlock off if you're a jackknife like me. With a Give him room, everybody, give him room. And by Bessemer Jackknife, if you can get that padlock off, there'll be another knife at the square table by dinner time Yep. It's getting thinner and thinner. Well, look, tadpoles, look. <laughs> it's off. The padlock's off. Open the lid quickly, Billy. Okay, Red Lantern. Uh, who, who is it? Who, who's inside? It's a perfectly lovely silver dollar hat. Where are you? Why, the scars are Miss Scabbard. Tis Lavinia Ladle from across Poon River. What are you doing here, your ladleship? He, he locked me up. Who locked you up? That wicked tuning fork. I should never have listened to him. He turned out to be nothing but a piece of pewter. Oh, what shall I do? Galahad will never forgive me. Uh, nonsense, Lavinia. He'll be only too glad you're still untarnished. We'd better get word to him right away, hadn't we, Red Lantern? Don't worry, Isabel. The butter knives will spread the news all over Tableland. Dear Sir Keen, how can I thank you and your brave men? Ah, uh, do not thank us, your ladyship. Your rescue was due to one brave hero alone. And who is he? The youngest knife of the square table. Rise, Sir Jack. You, you mean me? We mean you! Arise, knife of the table square, for you have met the test. You have won your quest. It's a sure thing that you're one of the best. Lottie 
seven-time pollywogs? You know what that means. It means that you tadpoles who wrote the most interesting letters about treasures you've lost and want returned are now going to have the honor of hearing your names and the prizes you've won. First, duplicate awards of rings. Go to Kathleen Walker of Elyria, Ohio, who wins a Girl Scout ring, and Sonia Granville of Buffalo, New York, who will receive a beautiful ring with a sapphire blue stone. Second, Gordon McCunis of Lynn, Massachusetts, wins a big black beard. Gordon is secretary of the Pirate Pollywog Club, all 12-year-olds, who need this beard to give a pirate play. Third, Anne Anderson of Alexandria, Virginia, wins a pack of beautiful trading cards. And to Mary Ann Alexander of Boston, Massachusetts, goes a Monopoly set. Fourth, in honor of the program today, here come triplicate awards of dandy knives, which go to Billy Grill of Saginaw, Michigan, Richard Wheeler of Washington, Pennsylvania, and Robert Borchard of Lancaster, New York. Fifth, Marguerite Slater of Brooklyn, New York, lost her golf ball named after Red Lantern. She said it brought her lots of luck, and without it, she loses every game. A fine new one is rolling her way. Mary Lou Gurney of Lewiston, Maine, wins a cuddly baby doll. Sixth, Roger Whiting of East Greenwich, Rhode Island, and William Bernazani of Roslindale, Massachusetts, have each lost a gun and will receive fine new ones. Seventh, Nancy Davis of Milton, Wisconsin, wins a set of play money and a real lucky penny, bright and shiny. Helen Schaberg of Omaha, Nebraska, misses her lost puppy, Duke. Well, uh, we can't replace live puppies, but we're sending Helen a smart pin to remember her puppy by. And now comes the grand prize winner, the pollywog who has sent in the finest of all letters of those received this week. She's Marcia Sheenberg of the Bronx, New York, who wins a sterling silver bracelet with a magic red lantern charm to replace the treasured charm bracelet she lost. Congratulations, all you winners. And to the rest of you, remember our motto, never say lost. And I'd like all you newcomers to this program to feel that this is your motto, too. You know, our great friend J. Edgar Hoover, Uncle Sam's number one G-man, says there couldn't be a finer motto for Land of the Lost Clubs all over the world. You saw how that motto worked for Billy's Jack Knight today. Jack never gave up. He never said lost. And he became a knife of the square table. So, if your first letter doesn't win a prize, be sure to try again. And uh, you don't have to belong to a land of the lost club to be a winner on Lucky Seven Time, but clubs are fun. You can start one wherever you like. All you have to do is uh, get a group of your friends together, make a date to listen to the show each week, and then decide on some club activity. You can have fun giving entertainment, doing odd jobs, making money for Christmas presents. You can run errands for neighbors, organize a lost and found department, have a sewing club. Do anything you want to do and name your club for a land of the lost character. Then just let us know what you call your club and how many members you have so that we can place a pin to represent you on our giant map of land of the lost clubs all over the nation. And don't forget this. But each week at this same time, we award prizes to you tadpoles who send in the most unusual letters about treasures you've lost and want returned. So if you've lost something, no matter what it is, sit right down now and in your own words, Tell us how you lost that treasure and why you want it returned. Who knows, this time next week, you may hear your name announced as a winner. The decision of our judges is final, and in case of a tie, duplicate awards will be given. Address your letters or cards to the Land of the Lost, care of the Mutual Broadcasting System, New York 18. That's easy to remember. The Land of the Lost, Mutual Broadcasting System, New York 18. And be sure to tell all your friends about Lucky Seven Times. Next week, you'll hear how you can get a wonderful book about the land of the lost and find out what happens when Kid Squid takes the pollywogs to the aviation field where the flying fish do their stuff. From then on, things are really up in the air. Be with us next week, same time, same station, when Isabel Manning Houston takes you again to the land of the lost.
Did you get a bite yet, Billy? No, not even a nibble, Isabel. My scale's alive. Whoever showed you how to pull in a fish? A talking fish? I... I didn't know a fish could talk. Mm, well, I can, because I'm Red Lantern, the guiding light of the land of the lost. Land of the lost? What's that? It's a wondrous kingdom at the bottom of the sea, where everything that is lost on Earth finds its way. How would you like to see that jackknife you lost, young man? My jackknife? Oh, boy, would I? Well, I could take you to him. Here, just stuff this magic seaweed in your pockets. It will allow you to breathe underwater. Now, hurry, put me back. Okay, let's go. Why, this is like floating in the air. Sure is. You can breathe and talk and everything. You look so much different than you did in the boat. Oh, that's because, uh, <laughs> just because I was a fish out of water. Come now, let's get a rip on. We've a long way to go. Magic curtain, open wide. Let my friends and me inside. All right, let's enter. But remember, Forbidden to take anything back with you. All ashore that's going ashore. And now, young man, here's where you'll find your jackknife. carving a table leg. He always makes his point when playing mumbly peg. <laughs> Such amateur exploits. Oh, no, that won't do. <laughs> Does pen knife carve a bread knife? What say you? Has he learned to open a letter yet? I say he can even cut butter, I bet. Imagine that tin man in our silver set. <laughs> Please let him join. Don't be so mean. I think he's cute and very keen. I fear the young blade is too dull for us here. Let him return when he's carved out a career. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is a man's job. <laughs> Thank you. 